Hi everyone, it is Mary Ellen with Moody Blooms. I recently was visiting my family in Wisconsin and had the opportunity to learn all about blacksmithing from my cousin. He is super talented and today he is going to show us the blacksmithing process that he uses. Hi, I'm Art Kunstman and uh, I make uh, metal products, uh, hand forged, uh, different things for outdoor uh, cooking, outdoor fire pits, fireplace sets in the house, uh, handles, door handles, uh, hinges, door knockers, anything that can be forged out of steel I can pretty much do. I'm going to make a set of handles from a Lazy Susan tray using half inch square stock. A forge is a type of hearth where metal is heated to a malleable temperature before being moved to an anvil for hammering. Here's one leaf that I have done and now I'm going to put veins in the leaves. An anvil is a heavy metal working piece on which metal objects are hammered or forged. In ancient times, anvils were made of stone. A hardy hole is a hole on top of the anvil that you can insert tools into. These tools are called hardy tools and come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes. Every part of the anvil, the face, horn, square and circular holes serve a unique purpose. Forging is the process of working metal to a desired shape by impact or pressure in hammers, forging machines, presses, rolls, and related forming equipment. This is what the one leaf looks like done. Now I'm going to reheat it. I'm going to use the, use the power hammer to draw out the length of the handle so I can get more, more length on the, on the material. Drawing out is the process of making the workpiece longer and thinner or longer and wider. Power hammers are mechanical forging hammers that use a non-muscular power source to raise the hammer preparatory to striking and accelerate it onto the work being hammered. These have been used by blacksmiths, bladesmiths, and metal workers and manufacturers since the late 1880s, having replaced trip hammers. At the end of the 19th century, the mechanical power hammer became popular in smaller blacksmith and repair shops. These machines were typically rated between 25 and 500 pounds of falling weight. Many may still be seen in use in small manufacturing and artist blacksmith shops today. The blacksmith uses many different types of styles of tongs. Tongs must hold the workpiece firmly without slipping. They are often made for one specific job or adapted for a particular workpiece and will vary in length, size, and weight, as metal sizes also vary. So what is a blacksmith? 
A blacksmith is a metal smith who creates objects from wrought iron and steel by forging the metal using tools to hammer, bend, and cut. So have you ever wondered how the blacksmith got its name? Well, the term blacksmith has been used since at least the 15th century along with related jobs such as spuriers, which is someone who makes spurs, farriers, which are blacksmiths who specialize in forging of shoes for horses, gold beaters, and bladesmiths. A blacksmith specifically deals with heavy metals such as iron and steel. A metal worker who deals with lighter materials like pewter or tin is called a whitesmith instead. The black in blacksmith refers to iron, which turns black when heated and exposed to oxygen. The origin of smith is still debated among linguists, but there are two main theories. Some think it may come from the Old English word smythe, meaning to strike, or it may have been originated from the Proto-German smithas, meaning skilled worker. For centuries, the term blacksmith has been used to signify a smith who works with iron. Blacksmiths produce objects such as gates, grills, railings, light fixtures, furniture, sculpture, tools, agricultural implements, decorative and religious items, cooking utensils, and weapons. The place where a blacksmith works is called variously a smithy, a forge, or a blacksmith shop. The word smithy is common in the UK and Europe, and the word forge is more common in North America. So there's some essential tools that every blacksmith needs. Some kind of furnace or forge to heat their iron or steel so that it can be worked. An anvil or other steel surfaced object to work the metal on. Hammers, chisels, and other tools to flatten, weld, and shape the metal as needed. And tongs to hold the red hot pieces of metal as they're being worked. And then some kind of purified iron or steel that can be shaped into objects. How hot is that oven? Uh, that's probably running around about 2,500 degrees right now. Usually about that, that color temperature orange is about anywhere from 2,300 to 2,500. I can get the coal forge. I can get this hotter. I use that when I do forge welding. And I can get that probably, well, it'll actually melt the steel and it'll just dissolve. It'll just disappear. So that probably can go close to 26, 2700, or maybe even 3000. Forge welding is heating two or more pieces of metal to the melting point where they will become joined together into a single piece of metal. Now many of today's blacksmiths work with the tools and techniques utilized for many centuries. The first evidence of smithing by hammering iron into shape is a dagger found in Egypt dating to 1350 BC. Blacksmithing began with the Iron Age and when primitive man first began making tools from iron. It also took many years for blacksmithing to discover the magnetic properties of iron. After the discovery that iron was magnetic, compasses were created and a new era in exploration was made possible. Right up until the Industrial Revolution, blacksmiths made most of the iron and steel objects used in the world by hand. In the time of exploration, many explorers such as Leif Erikson and Christopher Columbus brought blacksmiths on their travels into the New World. Had they not done so, the trip could have been one way and possibly ended somewhere in the Mid-Atlantic. As settlements were being built in the New World, a key part of the building of these villages were blacksmiths. Villages were dependent on the blacksmiths to provide tools such as axes and plows for them to maintain their ways of life. Because of the weight of iron ore, a constant amount could not be shipped from Europe. Whenever iron ore was found, a small industry began. And with these small steps, blacksmiths could start making tools, farm implements, muskets, cooking utensils, knives, even sewing needles and fish hooks, and nearly all necessities that a sustainable pioneer village would need. By 1700, some areas were prospering and had many of the amenities you would expect to find in a well-developed town or city. The Boston area is a great example. During the Iron Age, horses were a very important part of the blacksmith's business. Blacksmiths were sometimes horse dealers and were also relied upon for the horseshoe.
So that just has more pressure than hammering it by hand. Pardon me? This machine has more pressure than hammering it by hand. Yeah. The... More pressure than you don't wear your arm out as fast. Yeah. I used to do all this without that for years. It just takes a lot longer, that's so. all. Yeah. Highly skilled and well-trained blacksmiths were held in the highest esteem during the colonial times. Hundreds of blacksmiths supplied and repaired tools, equipment, household goods, and weapons made of iron. Their craftsmanship aided a growing population and laid the foundation for commerce and the expansion in a new country. In the 16th century, cast iron came into greater use. A Frenchman named Jean Tejou introduced the art of decorative blacksmithing in the late 17th century. The flair seen in today's art is at least in part due to the early work of this smith. Most blacksmiths are drawn to the art of the trade versus its utility. The uniqueness of the goods produced by blacksmiths is what attracts buyers. As things progressed into the Iron Age, the smith was held in high regard. The most skilled smiths could rise to high positions in the social hierarchy and become very powerful in their own right. The blacksmith was called the king of trades because of his ability to create his own tools. Compared to other trades of that time, all of their tools came from the blacksmith. The key tools of the smith are the anvil, tongs, and a hammer. Some of today's blacksmiths have more sophisticated equipment, but many have chosen to do it the old fashioned way. A forge pretty much has three characteristics. First, it safely holds burning coal in a way that can be accessed by smiths. Second, it provides a stream of air that flows through the pile of coal. And third, it provides a way to handle the burnt up and used up coal ash. In either case, the forge is heated to temperatures of 2,000 to 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. A blacksmith needs a forge for one simple reason. Burning fire or coal doesn't get hot enough to heat steel to the point where it can be worked. Wood will begin to burn at around 500 degrees Fahrenheit and under normal conditions can get up to around 900 to 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. But steel won't get very workable until at least 1400 degrees. And if you want to forge two pieces of steel together, you will have to get the temperatures up to around 2000 degrees. Coal is a great material for burning because it burns at a much higher temperature than regular wood and depending on the amount of air that is available, it can burn very hot, in excess of 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit. The available air is important because it is a chemical reaction that is happening, and if you blow air through the coal, you make it more available for the chemical reaction. How do you know when it's ready? By the color? Just by the color. I try to keep it a, a good orange heat. Heating steel is quite an amazing thing. It transforms in color as it gets hotter. This is one of the fundamental things a blacksmith looks for. You can, you can, you can buy tooling that will put the veins in, but they don't, I don't, I like the, the hand cut. Oh, like a, a stamp little bit more, type thing? More custom or more yeah. hand done instead of, and I don't finish my leaves or the stems or, or anything to the point like some of those guys who make this part here look like it came right out of the factory you know there's yeah. no, no bumps and stuff i try to leave it like this to get a little bit more just a little bit more character to yeah. it so. so now what i'll do is, is i'll let them cool and then i'll drill a hole in each end and then i bend them well i could probably bend them right now They're still hot enough to bend? No, I have to heat it up now with the torch. Uh, oh, what type of torch is that? This is an acetylene torch.
the old slack bucket. It's a little dirty water in there now. I should stick it. Good stuff. But then you got your handle. Drill a hole in these two fat pieces, and then I'll just have to heat this torch and lower it down so that it has a chance when you put it on. It fits like this on the, on the lazy yeah. Susan. Put the lazy Susan hardware on there. Yeah, but yeah, really I've good. a few and I've had people call me up and say, yeah, I saw a friend of mine or my cousin or my niece or whatever had had one of these, would yeah. you make me one? So I mean, they're a pretty good seller. Oh, I bet. So in blacksmithing, what there really is is only, I think there's five, five basic moves with what with, you do with the steel. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can either you stretch it out, which I did when I drew these out, flatten it, twist it, bend it, and in some cases, let's see, you can compress it. These are some handles too that I made some different kind of handles. Let's see that piece of hand here. Anyway, you can take it, take like a piece of bar stock like this and you can heat it up at the bottom and you pound it down real hard and you can actually make this thicker so that you can have more material to work with. If you yeah. want to make a big wide uh, decoration or a flower or a leaf or something, you can add, actually add material from the top on here. Cool. That's about all there is to blacksmithing. The one guy, one old guy told me the best way is if you want to learn how to make stuff, is to get some modeling clay and get it at room temperature. And he says, you can mold it, twist it. You can punch out the holes. You can do everything. Everything you can do with modeling clay, you can do with steel at the right heat. So that's what he used to use for his, uh, to do his uh, prototypes with. Very cool. So this is just one of the products that I make, a uh, fireplace set, poker and a shovel. And uh, in the previous video, you saw me making handles for uh, Lazy Susans and uh, like uh, dinner bells, uh, fire pokers for out outdoor fire pits, uh, outdoor cooking utensils and, and tools and things like that. Thanks so much for joining us today and I hope you learned something new about blacksmithing. If you have any questions, please comment below and always make sure you subscribe, give it a thumbs up and share. Have a great day.